guys, it's me, Miss Darzard, and we're here for the week five Miss Darzard Draft League recap. Once again, we're doing this live, so I don't know, this just feels like it works better for me. I just like doing it this way more. Anyways, if I'm interacting with chat, that is why. Uh, I'm not talking to ghosts, even though sometimes, maybe, but usually it's the chat. Anyways, let's look at the highlights. The uh, first match that we're going to go over is Kerfungal versus Jazz. And Jazz starts by blowing up the Regirock. Uh, Kerfungal swaps into Dusclops to take no damage. And then in the chat, Jazz was like, uh, that's the only move that I had on this Pokemon uh, for some reason. And you know what? Maybe have more than one move. I think that's probably the better way to win. But, you know, memes are memes, I guess. Uh... <laughs> So we do see uh, Rock Shiva get the Toxic on Dusclops, and Dusclops does take some chip here, but it can pain split, um, and it's able to wear down Rock Shiva a little bit before ultimately dying. I am surprised Crafungal just gave Dusclops up like that because Dusclops is a really good defensive pivot. Um, either way, uh, Dusclops goes down, uh, and I guess considering that Jazz gave up Red Rock for free, like maybe there's just not as much pressure there. Uh, but Kerfungal doing a good job getting some hazards up the Iron Barbs and Rocky Helmet damage, doing a lot of recoil. Uh, and then Leech Seeds are annoying. Um, or Leech Seed is annoying. Uh, this thing lives on 1% after Rocky Helmet and Iron Barbs. Uh, so that's crazy. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it's got, what, 1% health and there's hazards. And unless... Unless Jazz can defog here, like those hazards are just staying and they were not they were not able because Hoopa I think this Hoopa might be choice box. It's just doing so much damage uh, But here Jazz smartly protects to get the speed boost and then just kills with Flare Blitz again because Jazz used Flare Blitz is just that's the way it works um, I know Kerfungal was really really uh, freaking out in the chat of this game um, because he didn't think speed boost plays again should be legal um, just for all our friends at home, um, Blaziken is ranked uh, underused ban list, which means it's not even technically overused or OU in the singles meta uh, currently, so I, I don't understand why. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Kerfungal just wins anyways, because if anything is broken on either of these teams, it's Mega Charizard X, not the Blaziken, because this thing just boosts and kills things, as we're going to see. Commit to the bit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's that match. Uh, the next match we'll talk is Pearly against Spega. And guys, guess what? Guess what? This wasn't this wasn't Choice Scarf Dragovish week. This wasn't Choice Scarf Dragovish week. Instead, instead this week we got. Hold on, here we go, here it is. Instead, this week, what we get is Swords Dance Scizor. So just sit in, sit down, relax, maybe get a drink and some popcorn, and just watch the Scizor dance. Because it's about to start. <laughs> I, this is... <laughs> hey, God Bear, how you doing? <laughs> No, next week will not be Joy Scarf Dracovish. It will not be Joy Scarf Dracovish. I will not let it happen. <laughs> I can't speed this up a bit. This is this is people. The people need to see. I mean, okay, so you did some good things, right? You you were able to roost and maintain your health while da dancing and boosting. Uh, the only criticism I could I could give of this is, I mean, I see what Spago was going for. Spago was going for spitf drops on those Shadow Balls. If Spago would have got a, a crit or a spitf drop, this probably doesn't happen because, because he's able to put more pressure on with this Pokemon and actually pick up a kill. Um, so, like that... It was unfortunate, but it's still the fact that, I mean, he should have been prepared for this. Like, someone should have had taunt. He should have had some some way to deal with Scizor if it boosted, and uh, he wasn't prepared for that. Um, it was, and it was too bad, too, because he made a, some interesting roster moves, um, like this 
this Pokemon right here, uh, but didn't really get to utilize it. So instead, we just get to watch a Scizor sweep. <clears throat> the next one we'll talk about is uh, my matchup with God Bear. And this one is... This one is a nail biter to the end. The smash was crazy. So immediately, um, God Bear swaps out, goes into Manaphy, and starts boosting. Uh, thankfully, Toxbox is able to live one and uh, clear out the boosts. Uh, so then I go into Tabu Bulo. Now here I considered clicking high horsepower. I had high horsepower, but I decided I'd wait and see how is God Bear gonna play this game. Um, and he makes the smart swap in Arcanine to get the Intimidate. And my horn leash doesn't do much, uh, so just not much happening there. I do pivot into Shuckle to try and get some sticky webs up. So I am playing the Hazards game, but here I had prepped for this right here. I had prepped for Defog Klefki and just punching it every time. What I was not prepared for was Prankster Magnet Rise. Never in my life have I seen. <laughs> I, I just I've never seen Prankster Magnet Rise before. I mean, we did just see Pearly use Magnet Rise last week. But I just, for some reason, just didn't expect it here. I was like, all right, here's a kill. And then Magnet Rise and I didn't kill anything. Um, here, I'm able to get some good chip on the Arcanine. And then we have this, like, this is deceiving because it looks like we immediately make our decisions. I think we both sat there undecided on what move we wanted to do next for like five minutes because I wasn't sure if I wanted to Dragon Darts or try and predict a swap. And I think God Bear was expecting me to swap and left Arcanine in, and I was able to just uh, I was able to steal that kill on Arcanine real quick because I decided, you know, I decided to stay in and click Dragon Darts. Uh, that time I was prepared for the Magnet Rise and clicked Fire Punch because I did have that coverage. And then I tried to predict the swap, but I didn't predict the right swap. Uh, took a little bit more damage on Shuckle than I would have liked from Mammoth Swine. <clears throat> Able to get the sticky webs back up, uh, protecting to get some health back. But this thing, now God Bear was smart here, only clicking Icicle Crash. So I think that it's locked in, but then I baited the Earthquake to see if it was locked in and then swapped into Moltres. So uh, some, a little bit of mind games, a little bit of mind games. Uh, the overheat miss uh, hurts, but I mean, I don't think it would have changed the outcome of the game too much. Uh, I was able to still get some good chunk off. Now, this was risky on my part. I go into Rhyperior to finish off Mammoth Swan even though I get out sped. If that Icicle Crash flinches my Rhyperior, I might just lose this match just outright. Um, so not getting a flinch there was very, very substantial. Um, Shuckle being really bulky here helped me a lot because I was able to get my Hazard set back up. Um, God Bear predicts my Protect here and actually buffs, so that was a smart play on his part. Uh, but it does take a little bit more poison chip. Um, finally takes out Shuckle, and then I just, you know, I go in and I try to go for Sub Dance here, but he keeps the pressure on smartly, and I just decide to pick up the easy kill um, by clicking Phantom Force. <clears throat> uh, so then he goes into Clef Key, immediately defogs. For some reason, I sub here. I think this was a misplay on my part because. I wanted to sub dance and it hadn't occurred to me that Low Punny is immune to Phantom Force. And obviously I can't hit Clef Key with Dragon Darts because it's Fairy Steel type. Um, so it was kind of a misplay and here I was afraid of Fake Out so I swapped out but God Bear didn't have Fake Up or Fake Out on the bunny. And I could have just took a kill there. If I would have just left Drag Dragapult in I would have just won outright at that point. But I was afraid of Fake Out so I swapped out. Um, so that was a really good play on God Bear to, you know, bluff and make me think that fake out pressure was incoming when it wasn't. And then a little misunderstanding of how the healing wish mechanic works allows me to set up spikes and then um, get poison shit or get poison spikes up so the mana fees poison on swap in. And that poison is the only reason I win this game because I drag this out as long as possible to make sure I can get as much poison chip off on this mana fee as possible. That way, when I go into Dragapult, my attack's a guaranteed kill. And I even click Phantom Force just for an extra turn of Poison Chip because I'm just I'm just trying to be extra careful because I really wanted this win. Uh, so yeah, that match was fucking crazy. All the way down to the last turn. Um, really exciting. Uh, I, that was that was probably my favorite match I've had this, this year so far.
Uh, the next match is LAK Man versus British Giant. Right off the bat, LAK Man misplays, clicking Toxic into a Gliscor. Now I understand he might be might have been trying to predict a switch, um, but Gliscor has Toxic heal. Like, why would you click a why? Like, you have to do the play that is most optimal for rather they for if they stay in or swap, and that only covered for the swap. It, like, it's a wasted turn otherwise, and I just don't understand that play. Um, but either way, uh, nothing really results from it. Um, but now, <laughs> now we get to see Seismitoad claiming another soul, picking up a kill on the Como O. Um, now this is really cool. British Giant brought Sunny Day on Venusaur, so he's able to set his own sun, and then Venusaur outspeeds everything, which is, he's got two weather setters on this team to counteract the Gigalith Sandstorm. Really, really good tech, really smart to bring. Two weather, uh, two weather setters, the Pelipper with Drizzle, and then Venusaur who can set its own sun and then just take off with all the speed. Um, LAK Man really going in on some hazards here, able to get rocks and uh, toxic spikes up. So uh, British Gent immediately goes into Venusaur to soak up those toxic spikes and then get rid of the sand again. Really cool. Um, Weather Ball does pretty solid damage, but Ice Fang does not feel good. Um, toxic Chip is nice, but it didn't make a difference. This thing was dead to another Earth Power anyways, and it was definitely getting out sped. Not sure what that Excadrill swap into the Sylveon was. I really have no idea what that was. Uh, I think maybe he just misclicked or forgot that Venusaur was speed boosted in Sun uh, and outsped Excadrill. Like, that's the only thing I could think. Um, either way, it works out. After a little bit of back and forth here, we do see the Sylveon slowly wear down this uh, Venusaur. Yeah, Weather Wars are always fun to watch. Weather Wars matches are always fun to watch. Like, in fact, I think my most watched singles match um, from any of my draft league matches is from a Weather Wars match. Oh, there we go. We finally see the Sylveon take down the Venusaur. What we see next is crazy. We see Galade coming in throat chop. And uh, it, I think it's safe to say that at this point, we know it has rest, sleep, talk, magical leaf, and hyper voice. Hyper voice is its only fairy coverage. So the throat chop was insane tech to make sure that he couldn't get hit by its only fairy stab move. Such a good play. Uh, then he finishes off Gigalith with Psycho Cut. Um, Excadrill outspeeds in sand and kills with um, Earthquake. And then Pelipper comes in, changes the weather, outspeeds and kills with Weather Ball. So really solid match for British Gent. Uh, the next match is MOC versus uh, Okan, um, and that's Minor Manectric, the Fairbanks Phalanx. Um, and right off the bat, okay, so if you if you send out Steelix and you see Garchomp on the other side, like those are the kinds of stuff, calcs that you have to like have prepared beforehand. You have to know how much damage your Steelix, is, your Mega Steelix, is going to take from a Garchomp Earthquake, because it's a super effective move, that's what you should expect to see. Cursing there in the face of a Garchomp just doesn't make any sense. Now, Minor Manectric does see, does play this match well, uh, for the most part, but just losing that much damage on your Mega Steelix right off the bat seemed like a bit of a misplay to me, because if, if he could have had this thing healthy for later into the match, it could have been like a big difference maker. Um, the nice... Water Absorb swap there, predicting the Scald. And then predicting that swap by clicking Earth Power was a really good read by Minor Manectric. Able to pick up a kill there. Um, so that was a really, really good read. Uh, and then he makes the good read by swapping into the Fairy type. Uh, runs Fairy type solely this week. Gets big damage off on Garchomp. Uh, that multi attack does not feel good. And then able to paralyze the super annoying Pukumuku. The fall of Volcan. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah, that was a bad choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Miner, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, um, boosting, trying to boost in the face of Garchomp was questionable, but I mean, it, it, as we as we know, it didn't hurt you in the long run. But um, here, I think Okan misplays. Okan sex basically sacks Garchomp there. I don't know why you would overvalue Garchomp to Pukumuku. I mean, I understand Pukumuku is a nice wall, but Garchomp kills things. Garchomp kills things. I don't like, I feel like, I feel like Okan, hold up, hold up. <laughs> the power, the power up punch to go plus one with Muck and then live on 3% the following turn to blow up was insane. 
I lost my mind when I saw that. I do want to say that. Um, despite the Garchomp misplay, that play was really cool. Uh, Poison Jab just fails to pick up the kill there. Uh, so Tapu Fini finishes it off, but then Glaceon just cleans up. So uh, Glaceon looking really, really good for Minor Manectric in that match. And I believe this is the last one for the week. Uh, Sergeant Mech versus Prime Mursu. And this one, um, this one was interesting. Uh, Star Raptor finally has a really good game for Sergeant Mech. Does a ton of damage. A ton of damage to Lycanroc there. Um, Sergeant Mech with a smart uh, protect to scout there. And then pivots into the what is now revealed to be defensively bulky Mew. Uh, body press isn't going to do anything to Tabu Lele. Uh, and then Tabu Lele Thunderbolts. Uh, Audino eats it with no problem, gets a wish off, swaps freely into uh, Star Raptor thanks to that and the Intimidate. Able to live, and then this crit here just deleting the Golurk. There's no way that kills without a crit, so that crit did matter. Um, able to take out the Golurk in one attack, uh, protects the scout, and then swaps into the defensive wall uh, for Mew, with Mew. And then takes a Mega Horn. Now this was a misplay on Sergeant Mech's part. You boost after seeing, or you boost, and then you leave it in. You just saw Mega Horn and you leave it in. That was a bit of a misplay. Uh, not that it matters much. He goes into Cinderace, picks up a kill on Lycanroc, uh, and then gets the Intimidate off because Inner Focus is not active until it Mega Evolves, uh, which makes a difference here. Uh, we see another Protect to, um, to get some damage, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I almost got ahead of myself here, and then swaps in the Cinderace, and then gets another Pyro Ball off, and then kills another Pokemon. Like, Cinderace is so good. Um, Star Raptor eats Poison Jab, but the Galate is unaffected by Intimidate because of Inner Focus. Uh, he's able to Roost here, but I think this was a misplay. He doesn't know that this thing is... I don't know, maybe he knew he was uh, he had enough speed investment to outspeed, but roosting in the face of, of a Tabu Lele when you know it has Thunderbolt just feels really risky. Uh, I know you lose your flying type typing when you roost, but still, it just felt really risky to me. But either way, Star Raptor picks up the kill on Tabu Lele and then picks up the kill on Gallade, so that was three kills this week for Star Raptor, only killing itself, and then Cinderace cleans up with Pyro Ball. So yeah, that was that. Um, it's starting over, but we'll move on to standings. Also, hey Sam, how you doing? Thunderbolt and zero psychic resists is a bit suspect. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Um, I don't disagree at all. Cause stab is, I don't know. People always forget how effective stab is. Uh, but yeah, here are the standings currently. Um, so right at the top, we have the Friendship Society at 5 and 0 with a 22 kill differential. 22 kill differential. That's crazy. Like the next closest person, uh, our, our team is the Dutch Devils at 3 and 2 with a 9 kill differential. Like Friendship Society is far and away ahead of everybody else. Um, hopefully this week, hopefully this week, I'll be able to pull Friendship Society uh back down to the rest of us i'm not even in the top six right now i'm having a really rough time but a win against the friendship society would be real cool i think and it would be real good for my team anyways uh number two is are the dutch devils um at three and two with a nine point differential like i said followed by the chicago phalanx uh actually just look at this look at this Two through basically seeding seeds two through seven. That's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All have a record of three and two. The only thing separating those teams is the differential. And Fairbanks Phalanx and Sandoval Salazzles have the same uh, differential. And the Norfolk Kinglers and Belper Bewares also have the same differential at negative one. So things are close. This league is competitive. I like this is this is the closest of any league I've ever been in. Where like. Six weeks into the season, five weeks into the season, like half, more than half the league have the same exact record. That's crazy to me. That's insane. Um, but that's great. That just like like I said, that means it's it's competitive. Uh, the match up of the week this week is going to be the Dutch Devils versus Hannibal Slazzles. They're both at three and two, tied with the same record. Um, so one will be able to take a step up closer to Pearly, while the other will fall back behind the rest of the pack. 
So uh, that's probably going to be the match to watch, in my opinion. Um, spoiler alerts, the match already happened. Uh, so, But we'll be talking about that next week in the recap. <laughs> and then finally, Pokemon of the Week uh, is Mega Scizor. Uh, Mega Scizor obviously just danced 1 plus 3 and just killed everything. So, good job. Good job, Mega Scizor. Good job, Pearly in the Pokemon Friendship Society. You did excellent. Yeah, Pearly, Pearly has had like the last three or four Pokemon of the weeks. So, I'm going to see if I can bring an end to that reign this week. This week, I got some stuff in store. I got some stuff planned. We're going to see if I can pull it off. Uh, but yeah. You, you did miss it. You did miss it, Goldoa. We're, we're wrapping up right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a fun week. Fun week, honestly. Um, hoping, hoping this week will be more fun. Uh, I, <laughs> I really need to give Pearly their first loss. And we do have some fun matchups this week, so it'll be cool to see. Um... <laughs> But yeah, that's that's gonna do it for this recap. Um, thanks for hanging out, y'all, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>